it's fine. I can explain it here. Okay. So really quick, we'll go over everything. So here's my regular inventory. And once I see the different items, each of these items has like a slot. So this, uh, let me, hold on. let me move my OBS so I can see. Where's OBS? Oh my God, everything just closed on me. The struggle is real. All right. Sorry, I like moved my chat. I just want to see where my cursor is. Okay. Can you see that on stream? No, you can't. Okay. Well, anyway, um, the first slot is your money. So if I change my money, um, so see how it's a pokey flute now? And if I look here, my money is 4965. That item corresponds to the um, thousands and hundreds place of your money. So since my money is um, 4965, 49 corresponds with pokey flute. So if I change it to rare candies, which are item 40, so now you see there's rare candies in that slot, it'll be, tw wait, what? Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> These have a value of 255, and I can't toss them. <laughs> okay, uh, let me pick a different item. Uh, I can toss one of these. It should work now. What? Oh, wait, candies are 28, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> They're item 28. I'm an idiot. And that's because of um, the way that the coding works. But you see my money is changing when I put items in here. Like, depending on what the item is, it'll change. So, HP up is 23. Um... Super repels are 33, so if I swap in super repels to that slot, right, it goes, or 38 is super repel, is what I meant to say. Like, you see, like, the item changes based off what I put in there. So, like, the money is what that slot is. Um, this next one's gonna be kind of awkward. I mean, actually, I have a way to show this off. That's really funny. Okay, I have a way I can show this off. It's not going to be easy. Um, how can I show this off? Wrong item. Oh boy, actually, this is index 6. That's a terrible decision. HP up for that. Oh, hold on. I need to go to an index 0. Here's the index 0 for Saffron. Oh, well, I'm, like, gonna do a warp, but I'm not gonna explain it yet. I'll explain this in a second. Wait, wrong item. So I'm warping right now. This is something else you can do with Underflow. Okay, I didn't know where this would put me. It put me close enough, I guess. Okay, so these next slots correspond with my rival name. So let's make a save here. So you see my rival's name currently is S. See, S, what kept you waiting. If I, like, change the items around in down here, like these items, if I just, like, mess with them, now his name is Rocket MNRS. So you see, like, those items correspond with the rival name. So that's why when we make our rival name, we do the MN, um, the M, N, Z, X, and whatnot, because that lets us manipulate those items. So anyway, that's all that these items are. So the first item in the Underflow menu, right here, money, rival name, rival name, rival name, rival name. Then the next items, um, this is also rival name. We already went over the options. Um, this item here is your badges, so we give ourselves the iron there because it gives us the soul badge, or the soul badge, the thunder badge, and that's because that lets us use fly, we need to be able to fly, but if I were to use a different item, so like, let's say I put a soul badge in there, it'll give me Brock's badge, um, Erica's badge, and Koga's badge, and like, different items will give you different, um, results, obviously, because... Um, because different items have different, like, internal values to the game. TMs typically have higher values, so they'll, every TM will give you, like, Giovanni's badge. Um, but they'll give you, like, random badges, basically. And it, it like, we have ways to, like, know what badges we're gonna get, but, like, that's the gist of it. Um, 
So, scrolling down. So now we understand money, rival name up to here, options, badges. This is your trainer ID. So what's the best way that I could show that off? Um, I'm like trapped in here. Can I like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, this'll work. Um, these things are like near level 20, yeah, this'll work. So like, you know how Pokemon obey you? Uh, I forgot, it's only 20. So like, um, so what badges do I have? Okay, I'm gonna give myself no badges. So again, if I swap this item with... Is there a J item here? Perfect. Um, so now it says I have zero badges, because the J item is the, the valued zero item. But then if I do this, so let me go up here again. So, like I said, this is your trainer ID. So if I mess with this value, like that, now I've changed my trainer ID. So the game now goes, this Pidgeotto you caught is no longer yours because the Pidgeotto's value is different than the value of my trainer ID. So that's how it checks if Pokemon obey you. It doesn't have like a thing that says, oh, you caught that Pidgeotto. It's like, that Pidgeotto's ID is different from your ID, therefore it won't obey you. So that's how it does that. So that is these two slots here. So now we know. Um, Pokey Flute, so this is money. Train or uh, rival name, rival name, rival name, rival name, rival name. Options. This is badges. This is trainer ID and trainer ID. This will also always be Master Ball. So that is how that's how we get our Master Balls typically. Um, and again, you can get them lower if you don't get a good value here because these two items are completely random. Um, this bicycle here can be any item in the entire game and this Master Ball count can have any value in the entire game which makes it kind of interesting. Um, then this item is the screen brightness, so if I talk some of these, it'll change the brightness of the screen. That's literally all it does. Um, I didn't change any other effects, it just makes the game darker. But what's convenient about it is it's almost always going to be Ultra Balls, um, with a quantity of 256, because 0 and 256 are the same item. Um, next, this stuff deals with the map. So like Hyper Potions, HMO4, Moonstone, and this J item, and up to this Moonstone, all these slots deal with the map, and they have all kinds of crazy effects. Like if I swap these two items, it'll like break the map, and yeah, the game will crash. Like messing with those items typically breaks the game pretty badly, um, but the important thing is understanding like how they work. For example, um, this Ice Heal is currently my X position on the map. So if I change it to a different item, so let's pick HP up. So now the game thinks I'm in a different position on the map. So like, if I walk to the right and stuff like that, um, it'll change also the, the value of the item. So it's kind of hard to explain, but like, this is how we can manipulate items. Like, see now it's an old amber, which is obviously a useful item. Uh, we get the fossils this way. That's really the only way we use it in the run. Um, so that's that slot. This HMF4 we never mess with, as well as these hyper potions. So essentially, for like usefulness for catch them all, here's the ultra balls. Never mess with, never mess with, and then we only mess with this one time. And the time that we mess with this slot is when we mess with the, or we, when we get the fossils. And then this is the warping item tier. So this is like the most important slot, most likely for the run. Let me load the save state and we can mess with it. Okay. So I'll explain warping. It's tricky to explain, to say the least. So the way that you can typically tell when you're warping is when you're scrolling down, it'll almost always be Ultra Balls followed by an HM. So like, as I said before, this is the screen brightness. There's almost always an HM here. And then two items below the HM is the warping slot. So it's currently Master Balls times 18. And the reason for that is 
I'm currently on Route 7, I believe, and Route 7 has an internal value of 18. So, for example, Viridian City has an internal value of 1. Oh, I forgot. This is a special area. Let's go to Saffron. Now I can explain it. So, Saffron has an internal value of 6. Um, essentially with towns, it's the order that, like, when you try and fly, it takes you to. So, like, Vermilion has a value of 5. So if I change this value to 5 and leave this, it'll put me in Vermilion. And then the way it also works is each, like, each location has an index. So, like, this mart has an index of 2. Um, this center has an index of 0. The boat has an index of 5. Like, everywhere has an index, and that's a lot more, like, confusing to talk about. But, like, just know that everywhere has, like, an index. We almost always use index zero, which is why warping from here is nice. Um, so, again, um, map number four is Lavender. So, this will take me to Lavender. Map number three is uh, Cerulean. So, let's go to Cerulean. Let's just show it off. So, this is the index zero for Cerulean. So, I'm actually trapped on the second teleport. Like, you get the idea. Like, that's how it works. Um, hmm. uh, how do I explain this? Okay, so, so, again, changing this value here, it'll, okay, and then here's the other way that this works. So, when we say it'll be Master Balls or a J item, that's again with your X coordinate. So, see how it's Master Balls right now? So, Master Balls are a value of 1, and the, like, near J item, this, is a value of 0, and it just, like, it, it's based off of where you're standing, um, in a lateral position. So, like, on this position here, Master Balls, if I go 1 to the right, J item, I go 1 to the right, Master Balls, if I go 1 to the right, J item, you can see how this pattern is going to work, but, like, up and down, it doesn't matter, J, J, J. So just know it'll be Master Balls if you're on an odd tile, and it'll be a J item if you're on an even tile. So that's how that works. Um, but it'll always be one of the two, and it'll always have a quantity of the map that's outside of the door. So Saffron is an index of, t or an index, is a map of 10. So that's why um, it's a value of 10 right now. Let me go back to an index zero. So like I said before, this is the index zero for Saffron, right? So now the way that we do warping and that we label warps, like if you look in the notes, it'll say toss 29 balls, for example, to go to Mewtwo Cave. What that means is when we say balls, we mean the ultra balls that are in the screen brightness. So as I said before, these balls will always have a quantity of 255, essentially. Um, for, like, people who are just learning to run, they will, when we tell you to warp with them, they'll always have that value. So, what we mean when we say, to get to Mewtwo Cave, toss 29 balls, what we mean is, go to the balls, so Ultra Balls, swap them with the T, or with the, um, warping slot, which is currently a J for me, but you, you'll be comfortable with these slots eventually, swap them, so now it will take us to map 256, which is Pallet Town, because there's 256 or zero balls. But if we change this value by tossing 29, like the notes will say to get to Mewtwo Cave, toss 29 balls. We've now changed the value to, um, to 100 and, or 227, which is the value of the bottom floor of Mewtwo Cave. And because we're warping from index zero, it'll take us to index zero in Mewtwo Cave, which is this ladder. So that's how warping works, and like how we explain it. Um, whoops. Eh. Uh, uh, how do I want to do this? Sorry, I'm trying to get to Vermilion so that I can explain the warping better. Okay. So most of our warps we do from here. And the way it works is, again, It'll either be balls or TMs. If it says TMs, if you scroll down here, you'll eventually see a stack of TMs right here. Um, 
I guess I'll explain this now. Okay, so as I said before, so now, like, the slots that you have an understanding of should be... We go back up to the top. It's money... Rival name, rival name, rival name, rival name, rival name, options, badges, um, tr your trainer ID for the next two, uh, the screen brightness, that's almost always ultra balls, um, don't mess with, don't mess with, um, the exposition of the map, kind of confusing explanation, but basically, um, as I move left and right, this item changes, and we're able to use that to get different items. So you can see town map, next will be bike, next will be a question mark item. Um, as you as you move left and right, that item changes. Um, the warping item, and then this isn't super important to explain and mess with, and neither is this. Um, neither of these items are super important to mess with anymore. They used to be. Um, basically this is called the tile set item, and if you're ever in a panic, so like, let's say I fuck up the run somehow, and I like, I have to teleport, like I can't teleport from here obviously because I'm in a building, but if you change this value to zero, you can teleport. So like, if I change it to zero, I can teleport now. And that's like a good panic button, if you're like, if you screw up a menu and you're like, oh shoot, I need to get out of this location, there you go. Um, change that value to zero, you can teleport. If you change the value to three, you can dig. Um, there's just ways to get out of it. Um, so that's a panic button, we'll call it. So warping, panic button, don't mess with, don't mess with this item. Um, we don't mess with it in the run, you don't need to mess with it. Um, don't mess with this item either. And then this is a very important item. This is called the TP item. Um, so it's four items below warping. So warping is... Um, one, two, three, four. And then this is the TP item. We call it the TP item because it's called the text pointer item. So, like, if I talk to Nurse Joy, she's going to ask to heal my Pokemon, right? But if I change the value of this item, so let's just swap it with this. I don't know. Okay, she still tells me to heal. I will find an item that she tells me something different. Uh, this... Yeah, so now, now I've crashed the game, but like, you get the idea. Oh, XY confirmed in Gen 1. Oh, I found another location where this works. Interesting, I will get to be Nurse Joy. It's a techno rave party. Like, you, you get the idea. Like, I can mess with that item, and what it does is it changes, like, the dialogue that the game reads. So, normally, Nurse Joy would heal me here, but because I change, like, where it's pulling that, like, that stored location for what dialogue needs to appear, this is the dialogue that the game happened to pull up, which is obviously not supposed to be a thing, but, yeah. I've seen this before, so what will eventually happen is uh, there will be a... A cry, and then Nurse Joy will go away. And yeah, that's just what happens. I think the a random trainer goes away. It may not be Nurse Joy. I don't know what's gonna happen. But like, there's all kinds of cool effects you can get with this. But there's only a few important ones. Yeah, so she's gone. <laughs> that's like a thing. I don't know, that's a pretty rare one to get. So anyway, let's fly back here, and then let's go... I need to go to Cinnabar, actually. This is the easiest location to explain it. So again, Cinnabar's value is 8, okay? So Cinnabar value is 8. So if I use these Master Balls that have a quantity of uh, 256, and I swap them with Warping, right? And then I toss... 248, 256 minus 248 gives us 8, which is the map of Cinnabar, and then I leave, it'll take me to Cinnabar, but of course I'm an idiot, and I use the wrong index, so this is what I mean by index, that's an index 5, Cinnabar doesn't have an index 5, so again, if I go to an index 0, and I set this quantity to be 8, now they'll put us in Cinnabar, um, so the time that in the run, like, there's a couple times you use TP, 
So again, like, if I talk to this sign, normally it'll just say Cinnabar Island Gym, but if we change that value to something useful, so, again, the TP item is 4 below the warping, so here's the warping, 1, 2, 3, 4, here's the TP item. If we change this value, so I'll swap it with these Poke Dolls, to be something useful, I can talk to the sign, and it'll give me an Eevee. And the reason for that is we changed the, like, the, the location that it's, like, getting that dialogue from to the room where it gives you an Eevee, and we can just, like, get infinite Eevees this way, so, like, I can just get a bunch of Eevees. And, yeah, I can get, like, infinite Eevees this way, until, like, my box is full, obviously. Um, and then, what you need to know is also, like, every other, like, all we did was we changed this map to, like, have that, have, like, the values of that room. Let me see if I can find a safe one to display this on. Yeah, so, like, this guy, he tells us, like, the, the thing that the guy would tell you in that room. Um... Yeah, some of these will have airs and stuff, but like you get the idea. I wanna find I wanna find the right sign. Here. Okay. So like you see how it says, um, so like remember this dialogue. I know everything about the world of Pokemon in your Game Boy. Get together with your friends and trade Pokemon. So if I go to the Eevee room, right? That'll be what the guy tells you. Because, again, all I did was I changed it so that the game thought that I was in the EV room. I know everything about the world of Pokemon in your Game Boy. Get together with your friends and trade Pokemon. That's how that works. Um, that's called the TP item. And again, that's the item 4 below warping. So now for Underflow, we have money. Um, rival name, rival name, rival name, rival name, rival name. Options, badges... Your ID, your ID, the Ultra Ball to deal with screen brightness, um, never mess with, never mess with, um, the XY positioning, or the X positioning, um, the warping item, uh, the panic button, never mess with, never mess with, the PP item, um, never mess with, never mess with, roaming. So now this is the, the, like, really weird part. Um, and this is the last useful set of items in the game. So this is the last little bit of underflow that you really need to understand to, like, know the game. So we call these the roaming items, and the way it works is whenever you go to a map, based off the location surrounding you... Oh, I know this one. Dang it, I got beat. Anyway, um... The way, like, the way it handles it is based off the location you're at and the areas surrounding you will change what these items are. So, there's almost always going to be a TM stack. The TM stack will always be a different TM most of the time. So on Cinnabar, it's TM35. If I fly to, like, um, where's this going to take me? Saffron, I think it's TM40. Yeah, TM40 and Saffron. You get the idea. Um, but, like, these items change. Um, and the, the, the way that you know that you're in roaming is you'll see a TM with a squiggle 8, typically followed by moon sends, typically followed by HP up. And um, the way that this works is all of these items are, like, safe to mess with. So, like, most of the time, if, like, let's say I want to mess with an item in Underflow. So, like, let's say I mess with... Oh, my God, there's a really crappy quick item here. Like, let's say I just want to, like, mess with items in Underflow. So, like, let's pick... Let's pick this item. Let's just, like, mess with it. The game gets, like, glitchy, right? And now the game's gonna crash, or I have to, like, panic teleport. Um, stuff like that. But, like, with the roaming items, you're completely safe to mess with them, as long as you're in a building. Um, there's very rare times that the game crashes if you mess with them otherwise. So, like, all these items, I'm just, like, completely safe to, like, screw around with them as much as I want. Like, let's just toss some... I don't know. Let's just, like, toss a bunch. Nothing bad's gonna happen. Like... Nothing wrong, no map problems, etc. Like, it, you're completely fine to mess with them. And what's convenient is, because we can mess with them safely, we can, like, use them for the runs. Like, that's how we get Moonstones. We use these TMs to warp all the time. If it says use roaming TMs for a warp, so, like, for example, when you warp from here, you'll use roaming TMs. 
what we mean is scroll down to the roaming items. So like I'm in Underflow. So now I know. Um, like when you're starting runs, you'll go through like this mentality slowly, but like after a little bit, you'll like understand it. You'll be like money, rival name, uh, options, um, badges, your ID. Okay, so really quick, I'm gonna explain. This is the screen brightness, but because I'm in an area that has a lower brightness than out the outside world, it's an old amber. So it'll be usually old amber or a ultra ball stack. And if it's the ultra balls, it'll have a quantity of zero. If it's the old amber, I think it also has a quantity of zero. But the difference is I'm in an, an area that's darker than normal, so you can see that the mansion is darker than outside. So that's the reason for it being a different quantity. Never mess with, never mess with the XY position, the master balls we use for warping, um, the panic button, never mess with, never mess with the TP item, never mess with, never mess with roaming. And then when I get down to roaming, the like basically the first item in roaming is the TMs. This is what we mean by roaming TM. So for example, it says when you get here in the notes, it'll say use the roaming TMs to warp. You would go to the roaming TMs and toss 53 of them to warp to where you need to go. It says use roaming TMs, or it'll say TMs toss 53. TMs, I toss 53, I go to the location I need to go to, etc. So that's what I mean by roaming TMs, and all this is roaming. Still roaming, still roaming, still roaming. And then once you hit here, it's not roaming anymore, but you can see how big roaming is. And then once you get like this low, it's like it's still roaming, but it's like scarier to mess with. Um, but like you'll see like flashes here where it like cancel, and then there's like cancel and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but like most of this is safe to mess with. But you only ever go down this far one time in the entire run, and that's when you're getting nine F, which is like way down low. But like you get the idea. Like most of it is safe to mess with. So anyway, that is the full item underflow usefulness for the run sort of stuff. So now if we go back to the very beginning, we name the slots. So like here is, I'm like really low on my inventory for some reason. Okay, so regular inventory, your money, so again, um, your money, rival name, rival name, rival name, rival name, rival name. Option, badges, trainer ID, trainer ID, um, screen brightness, never mess with, never mess with, um, the thing that gets us the fossils, um, X position, so again, if I like move to the right, the item will change, um, it'll increase its value by one when I move to the right, it'll decrease its value by one when I move to the left, nothing important, um, warping, panic button. Again, you can change this value if you're ever desperate. You never change it in the run normally. Um, actually, you change it to warp out of... That's how we teleport out of the mart as soon as we get underflow, but that's the only time. Like, it's very rare you mess with it. Um, never mess with. Never mess with. Um, this is the TP item, which is how we get a few different things in the run. Um, and you saw how, that's like the thing we use to get Eevee, Magikarp, Golem, um, Gengar, Vulpix, etc. Never mess with, never mess with, never mess with roaming PMs. And then once you see the roaming PMs, that's the start of roaming. So this is all the roaming items. Roaming goes all the way to pretty much right here. Um, all of this is safe to mess with. Um... This is the index changer, but like, this isn't important, you never mess with this in the run anymore. Um, and then, you scroll down farther, this is still basically roaming. And then, as soon as you're through roaming, um, there's a bunch of like, weird glitchy items, and then finally it's just a bunch of J items, and then it eventually loops back to your regular inventory. So like, here's my regular inventory, and that's pretty much it. That is Underflow, in a nutshell. There is a lot to it. Like, a lot, a lot to it. Um, and it's kind of hard to, like, 
learn that at first, but as soon as you learn it, it becomes pretty simple to do the run. Because once you're confident with underflow, like all you need to practice is the um, is the LG fly section, and then once you practice that, you're pretty much set. So like understanding underflow is just the most important part of the run, and hopefully this kind of helped a little bit. Um, I'll probably just like highlight this and call it like in-depth underflow tutorial, but like. I don't know, it's not too important that this gets saved, but there were a couple people who wanted to learn the run in chat, so I figured I would explain it. I'll probably just highlight this and like put it on YouTube, I don't know. But like, literally the whole thing is like, once you know the underflow stuff, just follow the notes for your first run, and you'll learn the run, and then follow the notes a little bit faster paced your second run, and you'll learn the run a little bit more. But like, all you have to do to like, understand the game, you don't even need to know D-Sum, like your first run. Like, D-Sum is something you can practice your second run. Because if your goal is like a 5 hour run, you don't need D-Sum. Like, you'll eventually just get like, enough encounters. Like, it, it'll, it won't be as good, but like, you don't need a great run your first time through. So yeah, that is... That is Underflow. Alright, back to this.